this tutorial, let's combine some things we've learned to create a simple sign project. Let's open a new project board and define its size. We'll use the same 1x6 material we've been using with our other tutorials and make it 12 inches by 5 and a half. Start by opening the pattern library and selecting the basic patterns folder. In the folder called Fruits and Vegetables, select the grapes and drag it to the board. We can scale it down a little bit by selecting and dragging the corner arrows and then we'll rotate it slightly clockwise using the green dot on the rotate handle. Now let's open the Vines and Stems folder and grab Vine 04 and drag it to the board. What we want to do is make this vine look like it's coming out from behind the grapes. Using the rotate handle again, let's move this end point to be overlapping the grapes. Then we can scale it down so they fit nicely together. It does appear mostly to be coming from behind the grapes, but we can see part of the pattern poking through in a couple of places. We're going to make some adjustments here to create some better layering. First, let's look at the depth of these patterns. The grapes are at 0.25 and the vines are at 0.23. The first thing we should do is make sure that both of them are at the same depth. Having your patterns rising from the same depth makes for a better looking carving in most cases. A quarter of an inch though may actually be too deep for a small sign like this. Let's set these to be at an eighth of an inch. It doesn't solve our overlap problem, but it does give us an even foundation. So let's use the height tool to make some more adjustments here. Let's increase the grapes height to the max of 999 to make its details pop as much as we can. Because this pattern was originally created at a quarter of an inch, increasing its height doesn't do much as it was already pretty close to the highest point it could be. So let's try reducing the vines height instead and try to push it back behind the grapes. By reducing it down to 35, that looks pretty good. The grapes are sitting on top and the vines are coming from behind. All right, let's grab the other vine from the vines and stems folder and drag it onto the board. Just like the other vine pattern, we want the end point to be hidden behind the grapes, so we need to flip this over. We can go to the flip and rotate menu and select flip horizontally. You can also access the flip and rotate menu by right clicking. Then we can scale this down and just as before, position it into place. We we'll also need to adjust the depth of this pattern to be an eighth of an inch to match the others as well. This pattern doesn't have the height issue the other one did, so we can leave it as it is. Make adjustments to the elements so they balance well with each other and don't get too close to the edge of the board. Now we can move on to adding a background. Use the rectangle drawing tool to draw a rectangle on the board. Size it inside the board's edge to create a border and then right click and select center, center both. Let's now give this rectangle a texture. Click on the select surface tool choose materials and let's use the weathered wood texture. This comes in at a quarter of an inch and we're going to need to change it to one eighth of an inch so that it matches the other patterns. Now the texture is so dominant that it's taking over the other patterns. We're going to need to shallow this up. Using the height tool again we can reduce that, 20 is better, uh, I think we'll stick with that for now. Alright, so let's add some text to this project. Click on the text tool and click on the board to open the dialog. Let's make this a fine wine sign with an appropriate script font. Type in fine, press return to start a new line and then type wine. Click the left justify button and use the spacebar to add two spaces before wine to stagger the text. Then let's find our font. I'm using Apple Chancery on my Mac, which is very similar to Lucida on Windows, but feel free to use whatever you like. 
I'll leave it in raster route mode and leave all the other settings as they are for now. With the text on the board, use the corner arrows to scale it up to fit within the space better. And we can see that the text is already at 1 8 of an inch, so it's matching the other elements already. The spacing between these two lines, though, seems pretty large, so let's edit this text. Double click on it, or you can select Edit Text from the menu. You will need to highlight both lines of text, then adjust the line spacing here to be about negative 30. You can move this text edit window to see how it looks on the board. Everything feels much tighter together and creates a much better composition. We can still make some small adjustments to tweak the visual balance, um, like right here this vine is interfering with the letter E. Let's use our height tool to lower that behind just as we did the first vine. We'll match the height setting to 35 so they are consistent. That looks much better. Now let's rotate the board around and zoom in and out to really see what it looks like. Always remember the machine will carve exactly what you see. So it's better to catch issues here before you cut into any wood. One thing I notice when we're rotating is these text edges. They are steep and get really thin in some areas. This is going to be a problem. For detailed 3D carvings, we're using a 1 16th inch tapered bit. Being tapered, it can't match these straight up and down cliff edges. But our design here is telling it to carve all the way down to that bottom edge. In doing that, it will end up carving away part of the top edge of the design, and these thin areas will almost certainly result in chip out. No problem though, we can fix this with our optimization tools. First, let's select everything on the board. There are several ways to do that. You can right click and choose select all, or you can open your carving list and click on the top item in the list, hold down the shift button, and then select the bottom item in the list. This selects everything in between. With everything selected, go to the carving tab and under optimization, choose bit optimization and set it to best. This will keep the bit from removing any top level detail and reduce the possibility of chip out. Then select just the text. It may be easier to do this from the carving list. Now we want to add some draft to these cliff edges to help the bit ramp up to the top edge which will also reduce the possibility of chip out. A small draft will be enough to compensate for the bit's taper, but I like using a medium draft as it looks visually pleasing. Now let's do some adjustments to our feathers. We can see this indentation on the edge. This is the feather from this vine pattern. We can click on that pattern and change its feather setting to none and make that go away. Then let's click on the rectangle and set its feather to be a quarter of an inch. Uh, now it has a nice bevel to frame our design and it gives the bit something to ramp up to. Okay, at this point we've finished our composition and completed our optimization. We're ready to carve. Except let's look at one more thing. Let's say we're designing this for a customer and we want to get approval before carving or we just want to explore what different wood types or finishes might look like. We can change the board view button to show board texture. This simulates a wood grain for the board. Then under the board setup tab, you can change the type of wood, change the glossiness, and even define a second layer of material. This can really enhance a customer presentation. All that is left to do is save it, compile it, and carve it. Let's save this to our project library. Click on the project library tab to open it, then click on the new button at the bottom. I'm going to name this wine signs in case I design more wine themed signs. That created this new project folder here, and right clicking on it, I can choose add current board. This saves the board into that project where I can easily find it again. Next, click on the blue shell and choose Compile. 
it looks like this will be about 35 minutes on the good setting and one hour on best. Make your selection, upload it, and then take it to your machine.